Joel Montalbano, the Deputy ISS Program Manager here in Baikonur. Joel, another Soyuz on the pad, ready to launch another crew. In this case, uh, two Americans launching the addition of a third NASA astronaut on board to start a year of that type of crew complement. How is that going to increase uh, research and uh, solidify all the utilization that you expect over the next year? Okay, well thank you Rob. The, uh, the additional astronauts, fantastic. Uh, this expedition will have almost 200 experiments with about 50 of those experiments being new for this crew. And basically what we're doing with the extra crew time is we're doubling the amount of crew hands-on utilization and research. So just one person, we're going to be up to almost 70 hours, 70 crew hours of hands-on research and utilization per week average over the increment. It's just an exciting time to be in the program. How complex is this uh, next six months in orbit going to be for Akaba, Vandehei, and Mazurkin? Uh, you know, right now with the additional crew member, we continue to hit our stride on space station and doing more and more utilization and research. And the ability to do the science, do the research, get those results to the scientists on ground, it's just fantastic. And, and so we're looking forward to it, and we're just happy to be here. Three weeks from now, uh, the 60th anniversary of the launch of Sputnik from this very launch pad will be marked. A very uh, significant milestone in six decades of human spaceflight that have evolved since the launch of Sputnik. What? Uh, how far have we come? How far can we go? Uh, we, as you know, we've come a long way. The ability to fly six people on space station like we have today is incredible. We see these opportunities that are presented to us and allow us to do the utilization, allow us to do the research, and to keep moving forward. And this is important as we look forward to exploration. You know, eventually space station will end and we'll have to go past the low Earth orbit and go to cislunar space. And these days, these times that we've been working on these past 60 years, we're taking steps forward to go make that happen. Sean Fuller, the Director of Human Spaceflight Programs in Russia here in Baikonur. Sean, uh, this is the second Soyuz launch of a crew in just seven weeks. It's pretty remarkable when you think about it. Let's talk a little bit uh, about the pace of activity uh, over the past several months and what uh, clearly will be an incredibly busy uh, end of the year for the program. Yeah, Rob, it's certainly been a busy year, but a great year. We've got uh, three crew members ready to join their uh, crewmates that are on orbit now. Like you said, they launched just seven weeks ago. They've been on orbit doing a lot of research, doing a lot of things to get us ready to explore beyond low Earth orbit. With this addition, the crew will continue that. We've seen a lot of visiting vehicles coming. SpaceX is currently uh, on the space station. It'll be departing here in a couple weeks. It'll be returning back to Earth, returning some of that science to the ground. Uh, shortly after that, we'll have a progress launching. and uh, Then we'll have another SpaceX in orbit later this year. The crew's also going to be doing some EVAs uh, starting early next month as we prepare uh, the outside and do some uh, maintenance on the outside of the station. So getting these crew members on orbit to do that, increase our research, we're going to have a fantastic time up there as we continue what started uh, nearly 17 years ago with the human presence on the space station. This is the first time since June of 2010 that two Americans will be launching on a Soyuz. What is the significance of having three NASA astronauts on board and expanded U.S. orbital segment crew presence uh, as you uh, tackle all the tasks ahead? Yeah, it's great to have that expanded U.S. Uh, crew presence on orbit. We've got a lot of research in store for them. Uh, this particular crew, along with their crewmates, will be conducting over 250 different investigations during their time on orbit. That's going to cover the gamut of human research, biotechnology, earth sciences, physical sciences, really cover the spectrum of research that will benefit not only those of us here on the ground, but it's also technology that will be advancing us further into, into the space as we go beyond low Earth orbit. So having that additional research, we'll be able to double our research time on the U.S. segment. And so this is a, really a fantastic step forward as we look ahead to commercial crew when we'll continually have four USOS crew members on orbit. You know, we always talk about uh, this launch pad, its history. We always talk about it in regard to Yuri Gagarin having launched on this pad, but four years before Gagarin was the launch of Sputnik 1 on October 4th, 1957, that started all of this. Uh, your thoughts on the significance of that, how far we as a human race have come in 60 years? Yeah, I think it's pretty spectacular. Like you said, 60 years ago, we took that first uh, small step from here. Today, we have humans living in space. And I like to remind folks that we did start that on a space station 17 years ago. And so there's a whole generation now that their life has been with people living in space. We're now living in space, and we'll start venturing farther uh, beyond. Uh, beyond low Earth orbit, and so we'll, we'll take those next steps just like we did exploring new worlds here on Earth. We're exploring new space in space and, and going farther beyond. I'm getting confirmation the ground propellant feed has been terminated. We'll have 
one more umbilical to separate. And there you can see the engines now firing. The launch command issued. These engines now ramping up. Engine turbo pumps at flight speed. Engines at maximum. And lift off. Mark Vandehei, Alexander Mazurkin, and Joe Acaba lifting off and now on their way to the International Space Station. Ten seconds. A little over 10 seconds already into the flight, getting good first stage performance. So he's delivering about 930,000 pounds of thrust from those four boosters and the core engine. seconds and the vehicle is stable. Continuing to get good calls. The vehicle stable. Everything looking great as it sears across the Kazakh sky there, burning an image across the black. This first stage going to burn liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds into the flight. 60 seconds. Your pitch roll are nominal. So the yaw, the pitch, the roll, everything determining the attitude of the rocket, basically which way it's pointing, all looking good. Continuing to get good first stage performance from the Soyuz rocket. Eighty seconds. Booster motion control system parameter. And at this point, the vehicle already moving in excess of 1,100 miles per hour. We're a little over a minute and a half into the flight since liftoff. Still getting good calls on vehicle performance. Everything looking great. The next major milestone coming up is going to be that escape tower actually being jettisoned. And just got confirmation the escape tower has been jettisoned. And getting a great view there, you just saw the four strap-on boosters have been jettisoned, their job complete. So use already at an altitude of about 28 statute miles, traveling at over 3,350 miles per hour. 130 seconds, the vehicle is stable. So we're over two minutes now since the launch. Everything looking great. The first stage has done its job. Those four strap-on boosters have dropped away. That single core engine now continuing to fire. Getting confirmation from the visiting vehicle officer here that the launch shroud has been jettisoned. So the Soyuz spacecraft now exposed. The rocket's altitude about 48 miles high. And at this point in the flight, as we just passed three minutes, the Soyuz already traveling at speeds in excess of 4,700 miles per hour. And again, the core stage is the second stage, continuing to perform as expected. It's 56 feet in length, 13 and a half in diameter, and has a single engine with four fuel chambers that provide between 178,000 and 222,000 pounds of thrust, depending on the altitude, for its three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. This stage is going to continue to burn until about the 4 minute 43 second mark. Then the Soyuz will be ready to do what's called a hot stage technique, and that's when the third stage will ignite while the second is still burning. That's why if you remember views of that rocket, there's that lattice structure, that open area between the second and third stages. And we've just crossed four minutes since launch. Two hundred and fifty seconds. Your pitch roll are nominal. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling fine. As you heard, the crew doing fine, getting an unprecedentedly long view of the Soyuz. A very clear night there in Baikonur. And here a view inside. There you can see a Kaba. A smile. The crew doing well as the rocket continues to 
send them into orbit. The second stage still going. And confirmation the second stage has separated successfully. We also saw the separation of stage two and everything is nominal on board. Three hundred and ten seconds. And so at this point, the second stage has dropped away. The core booster separates at an altitude of about 105 miles. The Soyuz spacecraft now being propelled by the single engine of the Soyuz's third stage. That's going to provide 67,000 pounds of thrust and burn for about four minutes and two seconds. So the first two stages complete. The third and final stage of the climb to orbit now underway. Everything continuing to go very smoothly with this flight. Crew on board doing well and the Soyuz continuing its climb to orbit. Three hundred and eighty seconds of flight. Thir stage thrusters operate nominally. Everything is nominal on board, and the crew is feeling fine. So we're well over six minutes now. The crew, the rocket, all doing well. Four hundred and twenty seconds, your patrol are nominal. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling fine. So over seven minutes now, approaching the seven and a half minute mark soon. And the velocity of the rocket already about 13,500 miles an hour. Getting calls down from Mazurka and the crew doing well. You can see Vanda High at the top of your screen, Mazurka there in the commander's seat. And then just above him is that uh, Sputnik model, which keep your eye on it after the third stage cuts off and separates. We should see that start to float. And once the third stage is done and delivers the Soyuz to orbit, the spacecraft will again execute all of those pre-programmed commands to get out a number of antennas and deploy the solar arrays. And again, the third stage should fire until about the 8 minute and 45 second mark post-launch. So we should be approaching that very soon. 510 seconds, 520. And there the telltale jolt, that tells us that the third stage has cut off, getting confirmation it has separated. And Soyuz, confirmation of Soyuz spacecraft separation, the Soyuz now in orbit. This is Baikonur lead. Congratulations on the successful insertion, and I would like to give the floor to Mission Control Moscow. Yes, we confirm the separation. Everything was nominal. Thank you very much. And we're working with Moscow Mission Control. Now this is Mission Control Moscow. How do you copy? These are all tires. We copy you loud and clear. That's great. We are standing by for your KO report, and uh, we are waiting for standing by for further operations. Copy all. 
And again, a successful orbital insertion. The Soyuz now in orbit and got confirmation all of the antennas and the solar arrays have deployed successfully. So textbook launch for this rocket today, delivering the crew into its initial orbit of about 126 statute miles. The third stage cut off as we saw the crew get a bit of a jolt there and dropped away. It performs an avoidance maneuver by opening a valve on its liquid oxygen tank and then falls back through the Earth's atmosphere. But the Soyuz now in its preliminary orbit, and that orbit is going to get raised over the next six hours. Control has now been passed over to the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov. We're going to oversee these three crew members as they chase down the International Space Station. 1,150 uh, is the range, and the rate 4.1, uh, the S1 is nominal, 71001. Copy. And fly around. We confirmation that fly around has begun. So the Soyuz a little under 400 meters away from the station, executing this fly around maneuver. And this, again, just going to be some firing of the engines to swing the vehicle up over to the top side just to align it with that Poisk docking module, which, is, again, is on the space-facing side, so essentially the top of the International Space Station. So he's going to swing its way up there and look right back down at Poisk and at the Earth itself and then line itself up for docking, which is about 22 and a half minutes away from the scheduled time. Everything going very smoothly with this vehicle. The automated rendezvous not tracking any issues. The Soyuz craft continuing its flight. Three crew members almost at the International Space Station. So another view from one of the cameras on the outside of the International Space Station. This one does carry a bit of a yellow hue to it due to some issues with the color sensor. So this not in real color, but you can see the Soyuz continuing to fly around. It's almost at the done of the, it's almost complete with this fly around state. It's a little under 200 meters away from the station right now. Should be starting station keeping in about a minute or so. Copy. We are receiving the image right now. Copy Moscow, 67 meters is the range. The rate is uh, 0 0.1717, and uh, the value S is nominal. Copy. Fifty meters is the range. The diameter of the docking port is one square and a half, and the rate is 0 0.18. So less than 50 meters to go. Again, it's going to continue to slow down, currently at about uh, 0.17 meters per second, going to go all the way down to about a tenth of a meter per second. Again, the Soyuz flying automatically, that Coors rendezvous system driving the vehicle towards that docking port. It should just be a few minutes away from that initial contact and capture. The docking probe on the top of the Soyuz will retract to br draw it into the docking port on Poisk. And then once that's all complete, they'll be able to begin what's essentially the hard mate, where a series of hooks will drive on both the Soyuz and the docking port to really securely hold the vehicle in place, where it's going to remain for the next five months. So under 40 meters away, continuing this final approach, three new crew members almost at their new home on the International Space Station. 37 meters is the range. The rate is uh, point 0.12. The target is in the center of the periscope. Copy. Altair. And you can see some shadows beginning to crop up on the vehicle. The sun actually about to set on the International Space Station while it's flying over the southern Pacific Ocean right now. Proceed, please, with the report. The diameter of the docking port is two squares, 30 meters, uh, 0.14 is the rate. The target is in the center of the periscope. Copy. Two and a half squares is the diameter of the docking port. The target is the half of the square to the right of the crosshairs. 
Принято. Хопи. The range is 26 meters. The rate is 0 0.1. The target is half a square to the right of the crosshairs of the periscope. We have buzzer. SSVP is ready. They're just about 24 meters away now. So he's charting a very slow and steady path towards the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the space station. The diameter of the docking port is three squares. The range is 20 meters. The target is at the center, and uh, the crosshairs are aligned. Copy. So the target width is one square. The target is in the center of the periscope. Copy. We are receiving very stable image on the ground. There is a little discrepancy in roll. So the rate is 0 0.1. So the crosses are aligned. The target is in the center of the VSK periscope. Copy. We are at page 66 of the ODF. Confirm. Fifteen meters is the range. Zero point twelve is the rate. The crosses are aligned. The target is in the center. Copy. We confirm. So the range is. 10 meters, the rate is 0 0.12, and a square and a half is the, uh, the target. Uh, the target is in the center of the periscope. Uh, the crosshairs are aligned. Copy. 2.5 squares uh, is the length. The target is in the middle. Single digits just 9 meters away. Very close now to docking. We'll get you an exact time, but very close now for the Soyuz docking to the Poisk module. So the target length is three squares. Standing by for contact and capture. We're standing by for the contact, Moscow. Contact. We have mechanical contact and uh, we have docking mechanism engaged. Uh, great. Copy. And you heard it. Contacting captured. Docking confirmed. 9.55 p.m. Central Time, 10.55 p.m. Eastern Time. While the International Space Station flew about 255 statute miles over the southern Pacific Ocean, just to the west of Chile.